So, metallic bonding. Metals do not form covalent bonds with one another. Reason is that they do not have enough electrons in their valence to achieve a stable octet. Okay. So, in other words, really, we've also looked at metals and we go, well, you can't really mix metals with metals, right? They're two solids, put them together, they're going to hit one another and just kind of fall. Right? So you technically would have to um, maybe add heat to it, kind of kind of molten it, right? Make it more, you know, uh, you know, change the consistency of it and actually, you know, mend them together somehow in order to really bond them, right? And they do that with, with certain alloys, like, right? If you think of, if you have, a, you know, gold, any gold jewelry, right? That gold jewelry, as we're going to see, yeah, gold is an alloy. The stronger the gold, the less pure it is because it's mixed with other metals to give it that, that, that strength. So, they don't have the ability, but metals do bond with one another, okay? But if we're looking at it, we're looking at it in terms of, well, we have something like, uh, mag like magnesium, okay? So, we're referring to magnesium in a, con in, a, in, a, in a formula, but now that magnesium can actually be a, you know, actual piece of magnesium with us, right? But that magnesium, if we broke it down to, a, to an atomic level and we go even smaller, Right? We form pretty much you know, a whole bunch put together. So what we're going to have is we have this shared pool of electrons. <laughs> Can't seem to write on this thing. It's not letting me write on it. Here. Let me put this back. Let me put it. There we go. It starts to act up every now and then. Let's go back. There we go. The shared pool of electrons. Okay. So what we have is, well, we have magnesium. How many valence electrons are there? Oh, two. Two, right? Yeah. So what they are, they're just pretty much, so we have magnesium, and they could be anywhere around them. Okay, so even though they do not form covalent bonds, they do share their electrons, but they share them in this pool of electrons. Okay, so metallic bonding atoms release their electrons to a shared pool. So imagining metal as a non-rigid ar arrangement of metal ions in a sea of free electrons. So what happens is they give them up, but they're still kind of surrounding it. So by giving them up, they become slightly charged, right? And so we, we imagine, remember that piece that I sh showed you guys? This could be this the piece of magnesium. So if we broke it down and looked at it at an atomic level, we saw it as a, as a whole bunch of magnesiums put together. And they've given up their electrons to this pool that's, that's surrounding each atom. Okay? So the force that holds the metal atoms together is called metallic bonding. Okay? So there is some kind of a bonding that, that, that goes on okay, between metals, but Remember, because if, if we have a piece of metal, or sorry, if we have a piece of, of magnesium, right, it's not just one magnesium, it's a whole bunch of them that form that whole thing. Right? Because remember, how can we see one molecule of magnesium? Because it's not really a molecule of magnesium. It's a whole bunch of different atoms of magnesium all you know, clumped into one piece. Okay, it's just like you know that glass of water. It's a whole bunch of, uh, of water molecules all put together in that, that glass. We see it as a, you know as the entire um, you know what it is you know as a, as that object. But if we're looking at it in terms of a molecular level, there are a whole bunch of different molecules that are or atoms that are that are close together. Depending if we're looking at the water example or if we're looking at the magnesium example. So pure metals contain uh, metallic bonds as do alloys. An alloy is a homogeneous mixture of two or more metals. Homogeneous meaning pretty much mixed and it's consistent throughout from, the, you know, from any end, right? We, we look at uh, anything that is homogeneous, you cannot see the difference throughout the entire uh, uh, substance that you're looking at. Okay, so gold, as we were saying before, it can be considered in a pure form. So if it's at 24 karat gold, it's usually, a, you know, nearly 100% pure. Okay, um, but it also makes it a lot more uh, malleable. You can actually bend 24 karat gold. 
It's, it, it's, it's very soft. And what strengthens it and hardens the gold, so if you look at a ring, right, and you had a 24 karat gold ring, you have the, the possibility of slightly bending it every now and then when you're, you know, whatever, with whatever physical activity you do, right? But the lower the carat, the less pure it is. So all of a sudden, we can add something like copper to gold, and we strengthen it because copper is a stronger metal. Not as valuable, let's say, as gold, but it's a stronger metal. And also puts that, that strength, puts that dur durability in that bit of jewelry.